Hey, people, friends, my sweet friends. Okay, so let's let's just get started. thousand reasons right um, today I didn't sing uh, I don't know why um, just just so guys there's there are a couple of things I wanted to talk about today um, remember I told you that I'm going to do the book review <laughs> so exciting <laughs> this this book screw tape letters by CS Lewis it's, it's such a fun read. It's really, really a good book. Um, uh, by the way, before we go any further, can we just pray? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <sighs> Amen. Lord, I bring before you everybody who is watching this video. I ask that the message may be from your Holy Spirit to the hearts and souls who hear this word. Um, for your glory, Father. May your name be praised, and may your will be done. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. May your kingdom come, and may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. <laughs> All right. So, screw tape letters. Um... I'm not going to review the whole thing because I haven't finished the whole thing. Uh, but so, but I just I wanted to maybe go two two chapters, two or three at a time. The way this book is written, C.S. Lewis, he is genius. By the way, he was a contemporary, and I believe, and actually a good friend of J.R.R. Tolkien, and we all know Tolkien, right? The author of the Lord of the Rings trilogy and just like that he made up a whole world okay middle earth and Tolkien okay C.S. Lewis was his friend um and uh if memory serves they were in some kind of literature club together when they were students and so on and so forth but uh he's a classic author um and 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 you know a classic English author um so if you're looking for a read with really with superb English and just, you know, just so entertaining, this is the book for you. Why this book? This book is written from the viewpoint of a, an older devil to a younger devil. Um, so it is, it is really a screw tape is the older one. And he's writing to his nephew, Wormwood, who is, uh, I, I would say, a novice or a tempter. Uh, and they, really the, sub, the, the subject of their uh, written uh, exchanges is the soul of a young man who has been assigned to Wormwood. Basically, Wormwood is meant to destroy the soul of this young man and you know, lead him to hell. Um, <laughs> I want to go chapter by chapter or two at a time because there's just so much in here that is, I, I don't think one sitting will do it justice. So what, you know, struck me in uh, letter one um, is the uh, screw tape asks Wormwood to make sure that the young man focuses on just, I'll read the, I'll read the chapter. So he's telling Wormwood, don't try to win over this young man's soul by argument because the trouble about argument is that it moves the whole struggle onto the enemy's own ground. He can argue too, whereas in really practical propaganda of the kind I am suggesting, he has been shown for centuries to be greatly the inferior of our father below. I love it, our father below. Get it? Our father below. Okay, by the very act of arguing, 
you awake the patient's reason. Da -da -da -da. And once it is awake, who can foresee the result? Because as we know, our faith is in... Pro I mean, faith and reason are almost one and the same thing. Uh, because we know that reason without faith cannot explain everything. And faith without reason can very quickly descend into superstition. So it is never an either or, it is a both and uh, situation here. That's why the reason and the intellect and enlightenment are so important in coming to know God. Okay, let me go on here. Um, even if a particular train of thought can be twisted so as to end in our favor, that is the opposition, that's what I'll call them, you will find that you have been strengthening in your patient the fatal habit <laughs> Fatal habit of attending to universal issues, here's the clincher, and withdrawing his attention from the stream of immediate sense experiences. Listen, your business as a devil, okay, as a tempter, as one who will draw the souls of human beings away from the uncreated light, that's my addition, your business is to fix his attention on the stream. Teach him to call it real life and don't let him ask what he means by real. That's it right there, guys. How many, like, I, I, for one, I just could not deal with the onslaught of social media. Like, even mainstream media, it is so, it is entirely too much. Um, you just, you know, something like Instagram. <laughs> Me. So there's some good stuff in there, but I, I have come to the very certain conclusion that the needle in the, the, the good is a needle in a haystack. Like, whatever benefit may come from it, and there's a lot of good, there really is, but you have to trawl through so much to get to it. And sometimes, even just going in there, ah, is no gap. Like, you're so easily sidetracked and, and just blown away and just for me and anyway, i don't know about you maybe maybe i'm talking to myself here because you guys are probably far more focused and able to resist the draw of social media network the claws okay like but i couldn't i couldn't so i really had to do away with it uh, YouTube is another one. Ha! Huh, ironic because this video is on YouTube. But um, for me, YouTube is a little bit different because I guess I was a user for a longer time. And so I was able to curate a bit. But still, it is so dangerous. If I go in there, YouTube, without a plan, I'm done for. So my use of YouTube, I've just given myself the condition that I only ever turn it on or go in with a plan. I'm looking for a specific video. Um, let's say I'm going to a specific channel. I'm looking for a specific topic. I want to search something very, very specific, and I'll I'll go with that. And days when I, times when I just want to relax, there are one or two channels that I really, really enjoy. So I know if I go there, I'm going to get something good. I'm telling you, Screw Tape knows only too well what human nature is like. You know, he's telling this tempter. Keep the man's attention on the stream. <laughs> this talk about a stream. Isn't that our life in this world? Isn't that social media? Isn't that mainstream media? Isn't that all the noise? Isn't that all the distraction? Isn't that just everything around us that is designed to draw us into confusion? Well, distraction, I would say, such that you never really get to be still. What happens when you're still and know that I am God? What is that? Is that, is that, is that, just, let me, let me get my little cheat sheet here. That would be, Google is my cheat sheet. Uh, uh, and no. Psalm 46 verse 10, be still and know that I am God. Um, so it's not, to me, it's, it's not wasted on me that, the very first instruction. And C.S. Lewis is brilliant. Like this book, I would really highly recommend it, quite apart from the fact that it's it's very entertaining. Uh, it's very enlightening at the same time because it's. I don't think it's a coincidence that that is the first point of instruction that the senior tempter tells the junior one. Like keep him distracted. Don't 
let him by any means, uh, they would say, descend. <laughs> you, when you read this book, you understand like that. It's it's really it's fascinating the way C.S. Lewis has the way Satan twists language. Okay, and C.S. Lewis captures it so well. Um, so don't let them descend to the point of using reason because reason as I said is very important and also don't let them get quiet because that's how they begin to discover truths and guess what the truth will set you free and if the sun sets you free you will be free indeed so um, that's one point the second point in, in that, that really really strikes me <laughs> is in the second letter um Remember, I think one of my most more recent videos, the, maybe the one from, I don't know, one of Pyjama Piano ones, um, I was talking about how it, it's very important to have a kind of, uh, I don't think I use these words, but I was, what the point I was trying to make was that it's very necessary after the initial joy of, yay, piano, or like, yay, I'm starting something new, you know, um, it gets tiring and it gets burdensome. Uh, but because it's good, perseverance, that's the point. Um, we're going to persevere, okay? In letter two, Screwtape says to Wormwood, um, he's basically talking about what happens with the new convert. And this applies to faith, definitely to faith. Um, it applies to anyone starting any new and good endeavor. You know, you could be deciding, I'm going to get... 30 minutes of, you know, quiet prayer time and Bible reading into my day every day. Maybe that's too much. I'm going to do 15 minutes, uh, you know. And at the beginning, um, there, are, there are many, St. Ignatius calls them consolations, you know, many lights, many, God really comes, you know, he comes to your heart and you really begin, you know, taste and see that the Lord is good from Psalm something. I don't remember, but it's there in Psalms, right? Uh, you really begin to see that there is nothing sweeter than the Lord, nothing more life-giving. Uh, and that's the joy of, of the initial joy. Then, you know what happens? So, or maybe you say, I'm going to learn the piano, you know, I'm going to sit down every day and practice 15 minutes, you know. Um, and, and it's going to be like really, you know, not just like having fun, like playing songs, it's going to be like working on the areas that I need to strengthen. So, you know, doing technical exercises, um, you know, really trying to train myself on, on, uh, on, on progressions, you know, uh, whatever it is, whatever it is, it could be I'm going to exercise every single day. You know, when I get out of bed, I'm going to roll out of bed and do like five push-ups, you know, and, and then five, six, what, you name it. Here's what happens. Um, so, uh, <laughs> I don't know where to start because it's so deep. But what he says, um, to summarize, God knows that you know we're doing these these good things. I'm really I'm really butchering it. I highly recommend you read it. Maybe I'll just read the paragraph. Let's do it justice. So one would says to screw tape, or the other way around, the ju senior to the junior writes to him this: work hard then on the disappointment or anticlimax, which is certainly coming to the patient. He calls them the patient, but they they are very condescending when they are talking about human beings because they hate us, and it comes out clearly here. Uh, during his first two weeks as a churchman, right, the initial conversion, the enemy that would be God, like they refer to God and our Father as the enemy. It's so funny, as I said, it's the opposite, but it's not hard to follow along. It's very, it really immerses you into the story. The enemy allows this disappointment to occur on the threshold of every human endeavor. It occurs when the boy who has been enchanted in the nursery by stories from the Odyssey, Homer's Odyssey, right, uh, buckles down to really learning Greek. Hmm, <laughs> good times. It occurs... Just listen. It occurs when lovers have got married and begin the real task of learning to live together. I think all you married people out there, give me an amen. Give C.S. Lewis an amen. In every, in every department of life, it marks the transition. Are you listening? From dreaming aspiration to laborious 
doing? No, Jesus. The man you, the man C.S. Lewis. This is the human condition through and through. Listen, the enemy takes this risk because he has a curious fantasy of making all these disgusting little human vermin into what he calls his free lovers and servants. Sons is the word he uses with his inveterate love of degrading the whole spiritual world by a natural liaisons with the two-legged animals. So, I mean, quite clearly, these devils are wholly, cannot comprehend the incarnation, you know. like they, This is why, you know, our religion, Christian religion, is so much. It is not about transcending the natural. It is about incarnate, like God himself incarnating into human flesh. Like, he doesn't try to get away from the brokenness of humanity. He enters into it and redeems it. Like that's the, that's just that's all Christianity, okay? And of course, the devils <laughs> they would find this very unnatural, so they say it. Now here's the here's the here's the point I want to make, okay? About perseverance. Desiring their freedom, he therefore freedom. He therefore refuses to carry them by their mere affections habits to any of the goals which he sets before them he leaves them to do it on their own okay um and there lies our opportunity so now then he goes on to like make sure you press that point of discouragement disillusionment and all that so people now that we are mature adults you know when we were children like saint paul we did and we thought in childish ways okay and and i'm not there's a difference between childish and childlike, okay? Uh, God wants us to be childlike in simplicity, but not childish in our thinking, where we think that everything has to be fun and entertainment and engagement, social media, sparkly, bright, glittery, na na na, wrong, no. Actually, every human endeavor, you know, involves difficulty and it's going to involve, you know, it's going to require that you put aside sometimes your very natural tendencies and go against the grain so that you can actually attain to what God himself has planned for you. So it's your just initial joy and what have you. Yeah, okay, it's helpful and important, but that is not the thing that will make you sustain. And the devils know it, okay? They are going to make sure. When I mean, Haven't you ever noticed, like, it was... I was reading a newsletter the other day. It was, uh, I think, St. Therese, if I'm not wrong, of Lisieux. It is a Carmelite newsletter. So maybe another Carmelite saint was saying that this is the, um, what did she call it? She said it was the, uh, oh, how can I forget <laughs> the important point? Shindwe Shitani. That just means devil be defeated in Kiswahili. But she was saying it is just, ah, it was the mysterious opposition that is the cross, you know. So, I mean, you've noticed when you're trying to do something good, it's mysterious opposition, you know. It, it just is. You do anything good. I mean, even people will criticize you. Ah, they criticize Jesus. Oh, my God, they called him Beelzebub. They called him Satan himself for casting out Satan. Uh, so what what will they not say about his followers okay um it's going to happen but that in fact i think is the clue that you're on the right path okay i hope i've made that clear i read the book read the book guys um i'm right now on letter 24 i've gone back a bit because as i said it's so rich um and i want to share it with people because Again, not only is this book a fantastic, uh, just, you know, his command of the English language is beautiful, 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 it's accessible. This is the mark of true genius. Like, he's, he's very accessible um, in the language. You will not need a dictionary to read this at all. Um, and, and so lucid. I am certain that there was, he was enlightened by the spirit in writing this book and i'm not it's not on the level of biblical of course but it's helpful so read the book we'll be back with other chapters the other thing i wanted to talk to you guys about on that note of um the stream 
you know, being distracted by the stream. Eh? Uh, guys, this, okay, this is a rose. But what I want you to do, what I am recommending most highly is to pray the holy rosary. Oh my gosh. Peoples, if you, did I just say peoples? Oh, sorry. People, if you um, are really buckling down and you're going to give 15 minutes to prayer every day, I cannot recommend any other prayer other than holy mass, okay, which is not going to be 15 minutes unless they're on fast forward times two, but... Uh, if uh, if you can't do anything else, some cause some days you're feeling very dry. Oh, some days you're feeling very tired. Oh, some days you're just feeling like you have no work. Oh, oh, oh! This is life of Christ on a string. No, there's no better life. We all know that. You need to meditate on the life of Christ in order to become Christ-like. And I'm going to read something here. Our Lady promises, huh? There are 15 promises that she gave uh, to Christians who recite the rosary. And one of them, do, 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 promise number four. One day I think I'll also make another video on those promises of the rosary, but I'll link one below by someone who did a much better job. Promise number four is this. Um, it will, it, the holy recitation and prayer with the holy rosary, will cause virtue and good works to flourish it will obtain for souls the abundant mercy of God. Okay, here, here, listen. It will withdraw the hearts of men and women. Because this was written, I think Rosary was given to us in... No, I could be wrong, but I'm thinking St. Benedict was given the Rosary in 1200? Around? Was it 15? So anyway, the language is not today's all-inclusive language. I'm getting off topic. Back to the point. It will withdraw the hearts of men from the love of the world and its vanities and will lift them to the desire of eternal things. Then she adds, all that souls would sanctify themselves by this means. Hallelujah, man. Guys, me, I'm not, I am only telling you the truth. The Blessed Mother, you know, you can... Without her, you you can get to heaven. I think you can. Hmm? <laughs> but it is going to be a long, arduous, benighted, struggling road. And you may easily miss the mark. But with her, because her only, her deepest desire for all souls is that they get, she is like, Seriously, like mother, like son. She is like her son. She only wants people to go to heaven. And this rosary, like people say we pray to her. Yeah, we pray to her for her intercession. We, we, don't, we don't ascribe to her like almighty power. Only God has that. After all, she's a creature of God. But her insights, what you will get to discover when you uncover, this rosary actually is really meditation on the life of Christ. That is what it is. Just, and it, again, mark of genius. Accessible, easy. Oh, maybe easy is not right. Simple. Simple is the right word. Even a child could say it. Um, once you know the three or so prayers involved, it's it's very, very easy. Don't switch off your mind. I just, I would say this. When you are meditating the rosary, ask her to help you reflect. And you know why I also say this? Somebody pointed out that when Christ died, was on the cross dying, he gave to St. John, because uh, only John was around of the disciples, right? He gave to St. John. And then the women, the other women, and the Blessed Mother were watching him die on the cross. They stood by him. He, the last gift, one of the last gifts he gave was, woman, behold your son, Okay, and son, behold your mother. She is our mother, let me tell you. And it says in the gospel that the disciples, the disciple took her into his home from that day on. And tradition has it that she lived hmm, about maybe until age 70 or so before being assumed into heaven, right? Um, but she was living with St. John. And we know that the gospels were written after the 
death, resurrection, and, and ascension of Jesus. Um, and there are parts of the gospel, in case you don't know, eh, did you ever ask yourself, how did people know that an angel appeared to Mary and, you know, and, and um, declared unto her that she would conceive? No one was there, as far as we know. The only person who was there was Mary. Right? So she's the one who filled in a lot of detail um, to the writers of the gospel, right? And St. John's gospel, we know, is quite distinct from the others in terms of just the light and the lucidity that we find in that gospel. And I do not think it's a coincidence. This is, these are not my thoughts. Some very bright person came up with this idea. Um, I'm going to link some videos before below. Um, it is not a coincidence that that gospel of St. John, who took the Blessed Mother into his home, is what it is. So my friends, if you want, if you want to really be close to God, uh, I'm a witness, that's all, that's all. Uh, okay, so this was a very long video. Um, I just... I wanted to get these points across. I'll continue to review C.S. Lewis's book. Um, I, you know, I, I think I had promised before I'd make a video on the rosary. Maybe this is our mother's way of helping me do it. Like go, you know, looking at C.S. Lewis and then looking at the rosary. Those 15 promises, the video is below. Um, and I'll continue. Really, I'm going to continue as much as I can to incorporate this into the videos because... Without that woman, aye, aye, you are not going too far. Okay, you'll, you'll go, but my friends, <laughs> make it easy on yourself. Okay, so, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. By the way, do I look like more of a mad scientist with the hair? You know, I was like, ah, whatever, now it is what it is. Thank God I have hair, so, you know. Um, much love to you all. Uh, today I wasn't in pyjamas. <laughs> I actually uh, got out of pyjamas. Um, we, if you made it this far in the video, God love you. Blessings upon your soul. So let's close in prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for the gift of one another. Thank you for the gift of being able to uh, speak with people uh, who I don't even know, but who I pray and believe that you in fact are the one to whom uh, you are the you are the one who is speaking to them um, father i bring before you the intentions of every soul watching here um, i place them before you but more than this lord i place them before your holy mother asking for her intercession she knows how to pray to you she knows you lord jesus may our prayers be lifted up to be joined with hers to you Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God love you guys. Thank you so much. Bye. One love.